Marty Hampton. I am so darn happy to talk <laughs> with you today, Marty. Oh, you too, Maria. It's been a long time between drinks. We, we need to change that. Yeah, it's been a long time. But welcome to the Be The Solution podcast. And Marty, you certainly have been the solution for your group, your agents, your clients for the past 30 years. Yep. Yep. And you've seen a lot. I have, you know, but it's been a fun ride and it's still, I wouldn't be in it if it wasn't still a fun business. It's, it's a great business. It's a, one of the few entrepreneurial businesses I think that you can get into with just a whole lot of energy and a whole lot of ambition and come out with something. Isn't that right? How many places can you go and with some hard work, earn the kind of income you can in real estate? Right. Right. I can't remember all the data, but I was reading something yesterday on what doctors make and uh, engineers make and IT people make. And, and, you know, real estate can outdo any of those professions. It, it really can. As far as income is, you know, uh, if you just count business of what you can earn in this business. And of course, when I got in this business, Maria, I was a single parent. I had three kids. Uh, no family structure, no outside income from any place uh, behind all my taxes for the first eight years. I mean, it was it was touch and go. Let's put it that way. Well, that's a lot of hard work, yeah. a lot of blood, sweat and tears. Yeah. But you know what they say when they go and get tough? The tough That's get going. That's it. You only need a few good agents and you can make your world rock in this business anymore. So That's tell me what, what you think the number one thing agents are missing right now, just it's right in front of them. What's the number one thing you think? I know what I think, but I'd love to hear from you. So the first thing I think, the first thing I think is mindset. Mm-hmm. I think it comes down to what you believe, how you control your emotions or not. Mm -hmm. And the fact that this is a communication business. Oh. This is a business where you need to communicate. Did you ever go to a transaction, Marty, where it didn't start with conversation months before? Oh, goodness, yes. Years before sometimes. That's right. I called somebody last night, Marty. I'm doing, I was telling you, 100, day, 100 calls a day challenge. I love I it. Amazing. Somebody. I called somebody last night and he didn't answer. So I had said to him, he's an attorney. I said, I texted him. I said, Mark, do you know that I've been calling you for six years? He has a portfolio of investment properties, probably about uh, 10 or 12 triplexes with student housing. And so he had called six or six or seven years ago from a letter and still calling him. Good. Good. But it goes back to, you know, what are the things that people can do right now? And I think. The number one thing is, well, one mindset, two, being in contribution like we're doing today. Oh, yes. Contributing to our community, whether it be real estate agents and assisting them in growth or our consumers, our clients, mm -hmm. and educating them on the marketplace. Right. You know? So those things. And then, of course, the the. After those two things is talking to people and not as if they're a lead, but as a person. A human. There's solving a, human. a problem. Be right. the solution. Right. You're playing all my favorite songs. I mean, uh, I'm crazy about a podcast right now. I think it's Jeb Blunt. It's called Sales Gravy. It's free. Oh, yeah, Jeb. I know so Jeb. I love that. And what I love is the perspective of not 
totally focused on real estate. Because I think we actually, this is the time in, in our industry when we need to learn from other successful sales industry. And we need to think of ourselves, uh, of course, in that human way, but, but also uh, we need to be a pro. We need to raise our level of communication. You mentioned that communication is, is so hard. It's, uh, I, it's like when you're doing an open house. It's, well, let me tell you a story. So my husband says that when he goes shopping with me, which he rarely does in over almost 30 years of marriage, but he says, um, when we walk into a department store and I go, of course, to the high end stuff. And he said, when those people know your name, Marty, I feel nervous. <laughs> <laughs> they know they you by name. They see you coming and they're welcoming you with open arms. Well, yeah, they, they know my name. And so, I'm just thinking that when you have an open house, it's more hospitality than it is direct sale because you know yourself when you go in a department store where you, and, and they say, may I help you please? Uh, you say, no, I'm just looking. And I that's think that's what a lot of people do in an open house or no, I've got an agent. I think that's, uh, you know, not so true all the time. So you just be that human that's ready to help and give them a perspective, be really up on your market. Like right now in my market, I'll just tell you the truth. It's stalled. Uh, I think it's ele election jitters, perhaps. Oh, <laughs> I think in most markets it's stalled. Yeah. We're in October. We're in October. We're just mere weeks from a presidential election with a lot of contention. Yeah. And I've had people come right out and tell me I'm not doing anything until that election's over. Yeah. yeah. And no matter what we say, we can't do anything about that. Mm -hmm. We can't change that, right? No, no. But what we can do is be there for them and talk to more people talk to more people, have more conversations. I think, I think we as an industry have forgotten our sales uh, job is to have a pipeline full of people. And when you have a pipeline, it, you're in less stress. I told you I was behind on my taxes for the first eight years I was in real estate. There is no more stress than having the IRS hunt you down every day. That's, that's stressful. And, uh, you know, you got to give your kids their food, their stuff, and, and the IRS is going to come second. And you know that they're adding fees, um, you know, for you not paying on time. So it was a hole to crawl out of. And the only way I did it was I went to work to find somebody that wanted to buy or sell real estate. And then I eventually focused on just listings as being my number one thing that I was going to, I was going to work on listings. I was going to work on inventory because I knew if I had a strong listing inventory that, that I would have sales on a regular basis. When you have listings, you have leverage and you have leads, mm -hmm. the three L's in the real estate industry. Right. And then you can control the market and somebody can bring a buyer. Right. Well, you got the market working for you and for your sellers, uh, as opposed to just being that one card, you're playing only one card and maybe you add something to MLS. That's one card to play with. And in real estate, you need more than one card. You need a handful. You <laughs> need, you need a, a lot. I think, there's still misconception about this industry, Marty, and it's about, a lot of it has to do, I, I believe, with these reality shows that are on TV that make it look glamorous. <laughs> There's nothing glamorous about it, at, at least in my world. I don't know about yours, but. Uh, you know, Glamorous, no. And and the shows on TV, I think, you know, I, I'll just be really plain. My, my thinking about real estate comes from 30 years of experience. So I can tell you that real estate drastically began to change in 2010. And the reason it began to change, it changes slowly. But the reason it began to change is because investors and Wall Street came into our industry. And they looked at the large amount of home equity that homeowners owned in the United States of America. 
And some smart business guy said, you know, that's a lot of money. Uh, that's a big industry. We need to have our share of it. And then, then you have people that have never been in the industry um, getting Wall Street money and, and of course, you know, starting things online with not the, the lack, not the experience on the ground, but the technology behind them. And so they've chipped away and chipped away, uh, making our business more transactional than relationship oriented. Indeed, BlackRock mm -hmm. being yeah, yeah, the largest one who wants yeah. to own sixty percent of the houses in the USA. Is that is that the statistic, Maria? Is sixty? They Black want to own. They want to own sixty percent of the goal. houses. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you that um, an agent I would call slash investor. Uh, that I know left his business to go help BlackRock establish their United States business uh, and then went back to their own investment real estate company. And, uh, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, I don't know what the, the end result will be. I know we have to fight hard for our industry because um, just like, you know, I hate to put it this way, but, you know, it's just like the longshoremen are fighting against the Chinese uh, um AI to, to get ships unloaded. We have to fight against people taking away that personal touch of real estate. And, um, and I almost think of it like a doctor. I mean, I don't want my doctor to be totally AI. I want my doctor to be hands-on. I want my lawyer to be hands-on. I want my surgeon uh, to be able to be somebody that I can talk with and relate to and feel good about that they have my best interests at heart. And I think the same things with a real estate professional. A hundred percent. I think even more so in the sense of not from a doctor, of course, because <laughs> we really need them. But the real estate professional is really the person that knows what's going on because boots on the ground. Can't get that from technology. You can find out like, you know, things that are, they may not mean anything on paper in black and white, but there are more things about, you know, neighborhoods that AI just can't tell you. Right. AI can't tell you about, you know, the neighbors get together every year and they, they have, they have a park that they built all together and they all gather there at the holidays and they do, you know, a little party or like all these little things that are yeah. reasons for people to move into an area yeah. and live in a neighborhood. Yeah. There's That's there's true. so many of them. Um, I guess it's like an intrinsic value that you really, you can't put a dollar on. And that comes with the um, in-depth knowledge and expertise and literally boots on the ground. Boots on the ground is really, really important. I think what's happening, what's so different is I think the team leaders of today have uh, done a better job as the broker in charge of 20, 25 years ago. The broker in charge of 25 years ago got a large cut of the commission for their agents. They, they threw any agent in the, in the industry, they put them, gave them a license and um, they didn't do very much for them. And they took a big cut. Now, as the industry changed, and actually Remax was part of that change over the years, and then there's been other changes after that, um, team leaders started kind of replacing the broker in charge of old. And we know that the broker in charge uh, position has, is, you know, I mean, it's not very profitable. So the, uh, the money in our industry has always been made by the top producers. Don't you agree? I 100% agree. In fact, I feel as though being one of those people that we were convinced by our managers to start teams yeah, and then to grow teams and recruit to your team and add admin. And then all of a sudden the team leader has to generate business not only for themselves, that's right, but 
to pay the admin, to pay the marketing, to uh, give team uh, team uh, partners leads and pay for everything. Right. And then you're like a broker. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. But you're doing more uh, of, a, of a, a, you're creating something that's a much higher level than what when we got into the industry. It's, 100%. It's, if I had I, <laughs> what I, I give my agents, <laughs> the first eight years I was in this industry, I, I would have really, really done well. And I did well, you know, but I didn't have as many cards to play as what we give our agents these days. I certainly didn't as well. Mm -hmm. I'm still a producing uh, team leader and owner of a Remax, but right. we're a team op. We're a team op. So right. Um, but I I attempted the exit out and realized that I sell ten times as much as everybody else. So yeah. I had to exit. I had to bring myself back in uh, to the industry and. You know, I, and I'll stay in. I'll stay in for as long as it makes sense for me to stay in. Um, you know, well, you know as, as you know, I was a broker owner myself, but I never let go of my team. And I had at one point I had two offices, about 125 agents, but my team produced more income than the rest of that. So I wholeheartedly agree with your path. Yeah, the team is definitely, I found, you know, one of the things, um, Marty, that when I entered in this business 20 years ago, my background was in advertising, sales, and marketing, and I sold radio, radio ads, radio yeah. ads. Yeah. And I got into real estate, and I was like, this is the stupidest setup. It's a great business, but the setup is dumb. Why does every single person have to figure out how to, like do get a listing presentation yeah. on, and a buyer presentation and right. and marketing and all these things. And the, what the broker provided was crap. Um, you know, they had some nice shiny things, but it was for the brokerage, not for right. the agent. And mm -hmm. so I always have, was of the mindset of being, uh, working as a team, everybody working and doing what they do best. You know, like, I, if I had to do paperwork, I would have been gone a long time ago. Because it's, it, as an example, as an example. So, you know, you have somebody that does that. You have someone that does contract to close. You have somebody that does, you know, the marketing and creates flyers and all the things that, you know, we still have to create, whatever. And then you have the people that are, the salesperson is not the person that does, can, does the other things well. In fact, they do them pretty crappy. <laughs> True story. <laughs> True. You either got to pick as a as a consumer. Do you want a fantastic salesperson, or do you want and who has support, or do you want one of those salespeople that do everything well by themselves, and yet the sales will suffer because they're focused on putting something in the MLS? Right. Right. Well, well, there it is. There's always been the broker that did one deal and took six weeks to close it and didn't do anything else during that period of time except talk on the phone to close that deal. So I've structured my business around listings. And so what I've been focusing on is uh, how to give the home seller that wants the homeowner that wants to sell a better uh, service. And, and my total focus is on that. That's that's what I focus on. And, and you know, the real thing is is uh, it costs money to know who's in the market to buy, to know when they want to buy, what they want to buy, uh, if they're qualified to buy. It costs money to, to have those people in your database and to continue to communicate with them because you have to communicate with them or you don't have a, a breathing, living uh, something that is above MLS or it's in addition to MLS. So, so talk it, about your program that you offer. Well, I mean, we work with um, 
with teams and we work with them to help them grow their listing inventory uh, much in the way that I've grown my listing inventory. And uh, of course we have all those presentations, the things that we do, the high end presentation, the regular listing presentation, but really what we do is, is uh, um, it's like if you're going on a flight, uh, you want your pilot, he's taxing up there, he's got a, a checklist of things that he does before he's airborne. Well, once he is committed to flight, he couldn't turn around if he wanted to. And frankly, once you choose an agent, you're kind of committed to what they are do, what they do. And for example, if they put your home uh, in MLS without gorgeous pictures without the best foot being put forward without building up anticipation. And that's the reason we, we do the office exclusive, the um, coming soon, and then we do the first opening weekend. And, it, and it's just a, a, something that we've worked on continuously over the years to give that first couple of weeks, which is your best time, your most advantage as a seller. And you don't want to give that away to chance. You don't want to give that away to uh, an MLS or you might as well go play the lottery because you've got to have more working for you than that, than just MLS. Absolutely. You have to have much more working for you. You know, people said, well, I had it in the MLS. I said, well, uh, the MLS is only as good as the person behind it. The sign that goes in the yard matters what, what does the community of realtors think about whose sign is in your front yard? You know, right today's day with, with new laws, they're thinking, one of the things they're thinking, am I going to get paid if I sell this house? So you have to have that reputation that you, <laughs> that you're going to do business the right way, that you're going to pay the person and you're going to talk to your principal about his options, of course. But uh, I recommend very strongly that uh, my seller clients use the full weight of the entire market, all the buyer's agents that are out there, everybody. I have a couple questions. Sure. Okay. What do you think of the brokerage, the brokers in, there's many nationally that have decided, uh, whether it's team leader or whoever, an agent, single agent, that, they're not going to offer a buyer broker commission. Oh, I don't like it. <laughs> well, they say up front that, you know, that's negotiable. Just put it in the offer where we don't have yeah. one. Yeah. There is, there is a whole group of people that that's what they believe. Well, that's part of the dismissal of what we built up. And what we built up is the new brokerage model. And, and I, I think um, it's going to be very hard. Uh, if I if I could guess, if I'm properly um, looking at the future, I think it's going to be very hard for a solo practitioner uh, as the years go by, because all those are chipping away. Zillow, Redfin, all of those are chipping away at what we do and, and really devaluing it, if you want to know the truth. That's what they're doing. So uh, I think it's really important to stay focused on our service. And um you know, I, I love, um, who was it that wrote Rich Dad, Poor Dad? Robert Kawasaki, I always call him a motorcycle. Robert, yeah. <laughs> so he wrote, I love this quote. He said, when I go into a market, of course, he's made a ton in real estate. He said, I find the best agent there and I paid them more. That man understands the value of somebody that understands that local market. And you can't change that with uh, computer values on tax records, uh, valuing homes, you know, from a computer in California is not the way that you're going to get that on the ground, boots on the ground. It's not the way you're not going to get it. You're not going to know. You're not going to who's who's in the market. What are they thinking? The market can shift almost like the the, the uh, stock market. You know, the market can shift in a day. It's, it can hit critical mass on one thing and then it just rolls on through. So it really takes somebody who's very, very active to be able to add to the game when you decide to sell. The sale of your house starts long before you ever list that house. It starts long before. Yeah. 
I always say it's never too early to get ready. Absolutely. Whether that's literally physically getting ready, you know, getting rid of your crap Mm -hmm. or, and excuse me, and knowledge, knowledge of the real estate market, knowing what's going on in your neighborhood, knowing what, how quickly or slowly things are selling in your neighborhood at your price point, understanding, right. you know, you're only going to get that, you know, absorption rate and understanding those from somebody that's an expert in the field. Most people don't even know what I'm talking about mm-hmm. when I say that. So we have to explain it, which is all, which we should have to explain it to the consumer. But when the real estate agent doesn't know it, you know, that's a problem. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And when the real estate agent can't present a good reason to um, to have that assurance for, frankly, the buyer's agent that there's going to be payment there, um, that's to me, that's a problem. You're you're diminishing your your resources of people who would be interested in helping you sell your home for the highest price. No doubt. I'm on the same page and uh, all of our clients are offering buyer agent commissions. Amazing. Amazing. Under your leadership and guidance, they've decided to do that. And I'm sure all of yours are as well, Marty. They are. They of course. Because <laughs> we believe in what we do. And and frankly, if you if a buyer says to an, to their agent, well, I only can see houses that are offering a commission. What do you do to all the other houses? You can't go, you're not going to go see them. Right, right. If they absolutely have not the resource to to pay what you've agreed in your 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 um, paperwork, uh, then you have to discuss that with them before you go show them that house. All, all mm-hmm. up front. Yeah, so there's a lot of changes in the market for buyer brokerage, buyer buyer agency, um, those things. Luckily for us, we've always done for the last 18 years. So there's you know, not a learning curve on our, on our end, but I know that there is a big learning curve in the industry. And it's all that anybody's really talked about for the last six months. So, yeah, yeah. I hope that it gets better for people soon. Um. So, Marty, I know recently, and I don't know when it was, but I guess a year longer, not sure. You're going to tell me, though. You left Remax, and you moved your business to EXP. Mm -hmm. And why? Honestly, um, I loved Remax. You know, I owned Remax. I've bled red, white, and blue for many, many years, and, and it's a great name. People understand it. Uh, it's respected. Um, but it, as I told you, I was making more money off my team than I was off of my brokerage. And so I was really on my way to become an independent because I think I, I can almost tell you the era that uh, Remax just was dominated the industry for like 10 years. And then it moved to into what I'm going to call independence. A lot of people went independent for the next 10 years. And then a lot of people went to the EXP and the, and the one-offs on EXP. So there's a rise in everything. So I looked at my association with Remax and I said, you know what? People in my area know my name. Uh, I don't think, I think I lost one deal. Uh, because I left uh, that company and I was associated with it and I was proud to be associated with it. So on my way to, to go to that end, to go independent, uh, this, this new brokerage came in my area and I looked at it just like I looked at Remax in 1996. And frankly, I said, I, I looked at the quality of team leaders that were going to uh, EXP across the nation and um, I respected them. There was a lot of people that I knew uh, that I respected. I respect. I thought they were on the cutting edge of how we're going to have to change and how we're going to have to um, just pivot in order to keep our industry in the hands of people that care about it and, and are not sitting behind computers. And so I looked at this industry and I said, you know, this has some potential here, but everybody hates change. I hate change. I mean, I'll, I'll go. It's I'll, scary, right? I'll drive to another town just to go to my current hairdresser. 
You know, I mean, I don't like change, <laughs> but when I looked at it and it, and I wasn't, it was a head thing. It wasn't a heart thing. It, I looked at it and said, this will work. And, and all these big people that I know that I know are a hundred percent in this game to win it or in this business to make it better for themselves and their people, I'm going to at least look at it. And so actually uh, I sent my son out to Vegas. I said, go check us out, see what it looks like. And he came back to me with his reports and everything. And, and as I continued to look at it and everything, and I said, you know what, this is, this is a good move. I'm going to, I'm going to do this. And so I jumped on board with that. And, and I, I haven't looked back. That was actually right around COVID. And, it's uh, that long? It's been that long. Yeah. Oh right. Oh my gosh. I didn't yeah. even, didn't yeah. even realize it. Well, because, you know, I don't, we look at it like a lot of times the most part, I don't know where people work. I know yeah. you from Remax. Right. From some other stuff, but so I never even knew that you changed up until like, I don't know, the last time I saw you, I guess. I know. I know. It was last year. Right. In Tahoe. I know. That's great. I love it. So that's, that's the long and short of it. And, and, um, well, that's great. I'm glad that it's, it's going great for you. Mm -hmm. I was just, I was, I was just curious. Yeah. Well, one of the things is the, you know, the, uh, money that I was sending uh, to the franchise and, and it re, uh, EXP is not a franchise. So I didn't have, um, I could leave EXP tomorrow. I wouldn't have a contract that I have to fulfill. Of course I had to, as a broker owner, I had to fulfill a contract. But one of the things that has been very good for me is that money that was going towards the franchise, I actually got to put that in stock and the stock also was awarded to me when I made certain sales um, targets uh, that the company sets. And, and that's been really good for me. That's great. Well, mm -hmm. congratulations. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. So can you give us top three things if you are a real estate agent right now that they can do to drum up more business. Cause look, we know it's difficult for us. So it's, it's gotta be even more difficult for other people. So what can, what can they do? We know, we know they need to talk to more people. Um, but what else can they do? Well, Maria, you, you had me and I make, I'm, I'm in a, a quest now making a hundred calls a day. And that is so down my alley. Uh, great agents walk into a dead office that's nothing is going on. Nobody's on the phone and they pick up the phone and they make things happen. That's what, that's what we do. Yeah. Do you want to hear, you want me to tell you the results from yesterday? Sure. All right. So I posted this in uh, Facebook because I did the video on Sunday and I made a, I made a commitment to, uh, the world, well, whoever listens to it. Mm -hmm. And so today's update, this is from yesterday. Okay. Tuesday's update of 100 calls a day challenge. Started the day at 8 a.m. and did the day at 7.38 p.m. It took me six hours and 55 minutes of calling. Three hours and three minutes of talk time. 105 dials to 100 people. 34 connections, six seller appointments, two buyers, two for mortgage, and six agent uh, follow-up phone calls. I said, here's the thing. You make the calls. Now you have to do the work yeah. and make the calls. Yeah. Please know this is possible for anybody who wants it. That is so true. And that is, you know, it's, it's funny because uh, I don't know how you think about sales, but um of course, when I was raising the kids, I, it was strictly, I had to make sales in order to survive. But I don't think about sales as I'm, I'm going to make X amount of sales next month or next year or whatever. I think about what you want to do with that. With me, when I started, I wanted to raise our kids. I didn't want them to suffer because they were a single parent household. I wanted them to be able to go to things that, you That's know, writing 
all those different things, the things that cost money <laughs> that parents pay money for. I wanted that. Uh, right now, my new goal is not got to do with um, uh, a number of sales. I have something in mind I want to do. I want to remodel a property that I own. So that's my biggest, that's my goal right now. So you got to have a goal. You've got to have a mountain to climb. You got to have a reason that you'll go through the what you just described to me sounds like torture to 99.9% .9 of the agents that are out there. And to me, it sounds like pure goal winner. <laughs> so, well, it wasn't torturous, everybody. <laughs> it did take some time. Monday was rougher than Tuesday because. I was tired on Monday. So don't be tired when you're doing this. Make yeah. sure you get a good night's sleep. Your energy. No, drink, no drinky, drinky the night before. No drinking. <laughs> no, I, I actually cut down. Uh, I did 95 days this summer with no alcohol. Good Went job. to Italy. Oh. Had some wine. And, <laughs> uh, but, yeah, I, I felt I don't. I think you have to ask yourself, is this going to move my, my, is this going to, is this part of the mission? Is this going to move me forward? Right. And then, is you know, another, the other thing, when you're a team leader, you got to think about your people, you know, what's going to move them forward. And that's a harder thing to do than moving yourself forward because no you have doubt. <laughs> I think you have to learn why people do what they do. Like, why are they working? Why, what is their why? Why? Why are they working? They could be working at Instacart or Uber. Why are they here? Right. Understanding what their why is. And I think as a leader, Marty, it's up to us. You know, if we don't do it, they're not going to do it. You ask me how many people are participating. Well, I'm participating. Dara's participating. And some other people are participating not at the same level. I purposely stayed last night and I will stay every night until it's done. I will figure it out. And I think that making a commitment is more important than a goal. So the goal isn't a hundred calls. It's the commitment. Right. And when you decide and you make a commitment, a commitment, you know, is like, you're not really even how you're not going to go to work without brushing your teeth. Well, you're not going to go finish your day without finishing your calls. I've going back into hard. making the commitments and just focusing on today of the commitment mm -hmm. and focusing on the process. I can't control the outcome of any of the stuff that happens from that. Right. I only, I only can do my part of it. Right. And having a, a heart of a servant and of a lead of a leader servant, and being the one to show others how to do it, and then because anybody can do it, you just have to choose to do it. That's right. That's so right. But you're showing a great example, and there's there's few that show a great example, um, and and you are one of them. So your your team is very fortunate. Oh, well, thank you. And your team is beyond fortunate. They have like the greatest, they got the greatest, Marty Hampton. She, she's well renowned for her real estate. That's a legend sure. in my own mind, indeed. I love it. Now you're a legend in a lot of people's mind. Don't mm -hmm. fool yourself. Okay. So before we wrap it up today, Marty. Okay. Two questions for you. Question number one. What is your guilty pleasure? Mm. Mm. Probably a glass of wine and travel. <laughs> All right. I like it. I like wine. I like travel. Both great things. But and number two, what are you most excited about for your personal future? <laughs> Actually, I'm really excited about the opportunity to remodel my building. I've got a, a, I own a building here and I've owned it for a long time and it's in dire need straits of remodeling. And I'm really excited about 
putting a fresh new look here for myself and for my agents. Oh, awesome. That's great. I'm sure they're going to love it once it's done. So everybody better go sell some more real estate. Really? really. <laughs> well, you know what they say, or this is what I say. I've been saying this since the Mike Ferry days. Work works. Work works. You are so right. Work works. You do the work. It works and you got work. So yeah. Marty, thank you for taking the time today to be on the Be The Solution podcast. You certainly are the solution for your agents, your clients, your family. So thank you and God bless. God bless you too, sweetheart, and all your team. So take care. Long time. I want to see you again soon. Uh, well, we're going to make that happen.